Hello, Guardians. It is Ebontis here, and we've got our calendar for Season 9 and also a couple more tidbits from the stream yesterday. So the stream dropped uh, from Bungie. They went over a little bit of the calendar, a little bit of the lore of what is going on, of us trying to rescue Saint-14, who is definitely dead right now. They wanted to make that very clear, but hopefully we are able to rescue him in some way. That was one of the little discussions that we had. Had the calendar that we went over and we got a couple other tidbits. They did show the sundial actual PvE mode. Kind of showed basically one piece, like one tiny portion or like a section of a run of the sundial mode. But honestly, it feels a lot like the menagerie. So if you do want to go watch that stream, that's fine. I'm more going to cover the new stuff that we got right here on the calendar. Dates and things to look forward to. And then also we got to look at a couple new mods and also the artifact. So I'm going to cover those towards the end. So first, we've got the calendar. Season of Dawn launches on December 10th. We've got the Sundial PvE mode launching on that day, so it seems like there's no delay. It just will honestly kick off pretty quickly. And also, if you'll look through, you'll see Sundial, and you'll see, like, Nerul, the hollow voice. Sundial over on the 17th. Oslek, the Sky Piercer. It seems like we're going to have different Scion bosses that we're going to be facing, so there will be a rotation of those that we go through, and then it looks like way out in February, there will be a bigger shift that happens. For free acti activities for Destiny players, we've got the new artifacts. We know we'll go look over that one, see what changes, if any, are in there. Solar subclass updates, they covered that in a previous This Week at Bungie post. So we got some nice subclasses getting boosts that are probably needed. PvP mode that will be permanent now is going to be Elimination. So Crucible Labs has been working on that this season. They are going to bring it in with the uh, settings that people seem to find the most favorable. And they're also bringing a PvP map back, Rusted Lands from Destiny 1. Honestly, a pretty big fan favorite. I enjoy this one. It's got a good mix of both tunnels and sight lines. It's, it's a good map. It's a fun one. I'm glad to see it coming back, especially for 6v6s. Now, the other piece we see is the Tangled Shore and Mars Obelisks Open. That is for all free Destiny players. And when you see up on the 17th, Nessus and EDZ Obelisks. Now, it's say the Obelisks Open. The Obelisks, if you can see up in the picture on the 17th, they look very Mercury. There's another screenshot that I'll throw on screen here for just a little bit so you guys can see it. These things look very much Mercury related because the big screenshot you're seeing right now is Tangled Shore. The Tangled Shore and Mars, Obelisks Open, and then Nessus and EDZ, Obelisks Open. Now, I can't tell where the transition, if the Obelisks are going to be like four things around the universe that align, and then we're able to go save the legend, as you can go see. Maybe those tie together. Maybe they're totally separate. I really don't know what the obelisks are, but they are free to everybody as they're out in the normal planets. We'll have to see what those are all about. I don't imagine they're a big in-depth thing because there's two one week, two next, and then that's it. So those probably will be somewhat short-lived, but we'll definitely cover those when we get there. So that is pretty much everything that launches on launch day on the 10th. So the sundial mode goes active. We'll have the first boss that we face. Couple obelisks open, PvP maps, and your lantern. Um, I don't know how we're going to get the lantern, because if you look through the season pass, it is not in rank 7 like it was before. Maybe it just comes, like, as you switch over, if you talk and start the quest, or, like, the first time you go talk to Osiris on Mercury, maybe it just kind of kicks in. But after we've got the 10th done, the next week we see, as I said, the Nessus and EDZ obelisks will be open, so we can finish up the four of those. We see our second boss in the Sundial, Oslect the Sky Piercer. Now, I don't know which one's which by look, but the picture we got, at least uh, in the trailer, um, if it's Nyrule, the hollow voice, he's kind of ugly because he's got his helmet off. The other guys look pretty cool because they've got their helmets on. Scions tend to look pretty cool. They have awesome cloaks and stuff like that. So we'll see what goes along with stuff that they drop. Wishing it was actually some unique stuff, but doubt it, but we'll see. So that will be another boss in the Sundial, and then we've got Save a Legend. This is Saint-14. He's the one sitting there on that big title day page. Awesome Titan. His helm literally helps with the Ward of Dawn, the helm of Saint-14, hence the season of Dawn. Um, and the little bird that is there, actually on the wings, it's kind of got an XIV-14. It's pretty much all over the season. So the little icon, you'll notice it says... Requires Season of Dawn. It's the kind of eagle with 14 on it. And then if it's the Destiny symbol, it is free for everybody. So if you guys are looking through, that can help make the distinction. Somehow we go save Legend. I don't know if the four obelisks like align time or we're able to do something with those. And then we can go save the Legend. But either way, our quest to go save, revive, uh, travel through time. We don't know, but some way to get Saint-14 back in our universe and alive is the goal it looks like. Then we get to a couple sections that overlap. So we have the Dawning. Now, 
honestly probably don't get excited. This is likely not Sparrow Racing League. One main reason is because you'll see what looks like a snowmobile Sparrow. Um, I think that's just a cosmetic of something they're kind of advertising for the season. But down below it, somewhat smaller, we have the sleigh from last year. Now, the sleigh is a cool thing. Uh, kind of drops glimmer on the ground as you drive if you have it upgraded. Um, but I think these are just going to be sparrows that you can earn. I think advertising anything with sparrows generally is kind of a tease because so many people want Sparrow Racing League to come back. I would just like to them have like a dawning or a snowflake in there. I don't care. But advertising it with sparrows unless Sparrow Racing League is coming is kind of a mean tease for a lot of people who are looking for that mode. We'll see, but I just would not expect it to be here. So don't hold your breath hoping for Sparrow Racing League. If they surprise me, I will definitely be surprised. But that goes from De December 17th which is the same time all the stuff above starts actually. So um, you'll notice December 17th is the start of the dawning and the Nessus Obelisk and the time we save the legend and Oslect. So that thing goes on for four weeks. We've got a lot of stuff that falls in there. Apparently the graphic just had to get positioned accordingly. The following week on the 24th, we do get our first iron banner. That one will be active. They do have some reprised armor sets in there. You'll notice those probably from uh, probably year one You'll recognize a couple of those armor sets, so those will be coming back, but they will be obviously season nine armor, so they will have the seasonal slot if you want. Pinnacles from the bounties, of course, being in there as well. Still being a good thing for Iron Banner if you're trying to level up. Don't know how leveling works right now. They said that's gonna come more in this week at Bungie's post today. I'm recording this before today because I'm gonna post kind of a recap of the TWAB tomorrow before the podcast tomorrow night. Uh, if you are wanting to watch the podcast, The Last Word, that will be on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash ebontis. It'll be 6 p.m. Eastern time. Jump in there. We will be talking. Got an awesome guest, Teddy. He's got more hours in this game probably than Cognito and I combined. So we've got a great mind coming in to talk about the new season. Cannot wait for that one tomorrow night. Also on the 24th, we have another boss in the Sundial, Tazarok the Sun Eater. So if we're going by themes here, Oslect very much looks arc related. Uh, the Sun Eater, orange, I'm assuming he's going to be somehow solar. And then the other guy might be Void, just guessing, but not entirely sure. So we have another boss there. Then we have the holiday break, because the 24th is Iron Banner, and then Christmas is the next day, so you've got a week there. Then New Year's is the day after the next reset, on the 31st. And then we get to, that's for usually when Bungie takes their break, so they'll kick off Iron Banner, let that boss be out there. They'll have, you know, Skeleton Crew over there for a couple weeks. They'll take their break, we come back, and we have Legend Sundial. Legend is going to be the hard mode of the Sundial. Normal Sundial does have matchmaking, Legend difficulty will not. It will take a six-person six pre-made fire team for you to go into the difficult version. I don't know what it's going to be for, <clears throat> but we do know it is going to be a hard mode version, which I know some people wanted, Vex Offensive just being the same difficulty the whole time. People wanted a little more out of it, so we do have at least something coming for those that do want a bit of a challenge. The next one we've got is the Exotic Quest Devil's Ruin, also on the 7th. I'll bring up a picture so you can, can see a little bit more detail. It does look pretty cool. It definitely looks like a pistol, like, you know, with a magazine, however many bullets in the clip. It also looks like it's got a barrel strapped underneath the barrel, which is interesting. I'm not entirely sure how it's going to work. In the trailer, there is a frame or two where you can see this thing. It looks like it's got solar kind of particles out in front of it. So my guess it might be a solar sidearm. Not entirely sure, but that is just pure speculation on my part. Uh, but we will have an exotic quest on the 7th. Now, the dawning will end on the 14th. So it's going to end the end of the week of the 7th. So uh, the week with the legend that comes out, when that reset happens on what would be the 14th or 15th, then that is when the dawning will end. So we will have finished the dawning at this point. Two weeks later, so you have the reset on the 14th, nothing. Reset on the 21st, nothing. Then we have the exotic quest Bastion. Now, we've heard of the exotic scout rifle by the actual description on the bungee page for symmetry that's the scout rifle bastion we don't know what it is here's another picture so you guys can see again the art on this gun is just blowing me away it's freaking gorgeous um some people are saying fusion rifle some people are saying linear fusion rifle because there's a little tiny like tease of something that we saw in a old uh, vidoc and it said Sundial, Linear Fusion Rifle, something like that. Maybe this is it. There's also a focus on more ranged weapons. Linear Fusion Rifles is one of them. So having this be a Linear Fusion would be fitting. I just can't tell if it looks like a Linear Fusion, but it definitely is possible. Maybe in how it fires or whatever it does, but it could be something unique. 
Either way, fusion, linear fusion is the speculation. Honestly, I have no idea. Its shape could be literally anything. Could be a pulse, could be an auto, maybe a goofy scout, fusion. Any and all that seems like it's on the table, so I really don't have the foggiest on that one. That's on the 28th. Then on February 4th, we've got Empyrean Foundation. I don't have the foggiest idea what this is at all either. Now, we can see we've got the kind of the portal for the infinite forest on Mercury. It looks closed for some reason. I'm not entirely sure why, because it looks like at this point, there's no portal. It looks just closed off in stone. It also looks like we're in the Mercury past where you've got the actual trees and the yellow fields. Something is going to happen here. Not entirely sure what. We also have another boss. Sundial, Enotam, Oblivion's Triune. Now, if you notice the other ones kind of had colors to them. He had Arc, he had Solar, the two that we can see on the 17th and the 24th. There are a couple screenshots, one I will put on screen, where it looks like time is just broken, and we're literally between time, this whole black and white monochromatic space. So, besides the fact that this place looks amazing, there's a couple teasers as maybe we're passing through time. Maybe this is how we go save Saint-14, not entirely sure. If we come back to the calendar and we look at Enotom, he has that same color to him. He's monochromatic. The grays, the blacks, the whites. Even his cloak looks like it's almost see-through crystal. So from him, I think he's going to have some tie into that. Maybe the fourth like time space that we get to go into. Not entirely sure, but again, they've got a kind of a theme going in with these bosses. So I'm guessing there will be something to that. That is on the fourth. A week after that, we have Crimson Days. That is always the Halloween event. I can't tell if we're driving sparrows in pairs. Not entirely sure what's happening here. But again, I don't think sparrows are going to be related to Sparrow Racing League. If it is, you could probably knock me over with a feather because I will be surprised off my butt. But maybe. But usually it's just some PvP-related thing where you stick together, you get a bit of a buff. We'll see if they do anything much more than that. Now, the season itself goes through March 9th. You'll notice Crimson Days goes through the 18th. That leaves three weeks that we don't know. We don't know what happens from the 8th, 19th through March 9th, those final three weeks of the season. Last season, we had the Vex Offensive Final Assault. That was advertised as the final thing. What did we get? A change in boss. Not anything really major and exciting, less than most of us were hoping for, I could probably bet. This time through, we don't know what we're going to get. Now, maybe they're holding it back because they're not entirely sure. Maybe they're still working on the writing of connecting the seasons. Maybe they just don't want to set our expectations too high by putting it on the calendar. So they're keeping it off the table. And we'll kind of get there when we get there with a, get another kind of surprise. And honestly, I'd rather have no expectations and be surprised with something than have high expectations and get taken out at the knees. So at this point, there are three weeks left in the season after Crimson Days. We just don't know what is there. I wouldn't hold your hopes high, but maybe there is some transition thing again that takes us into the season that follows this. That is all we know. But that is basically everything we've got on the calendar at this point. <clears throat> but I do want to cover the artifact and the mods, at least a couple of the mods, so you guys can see what I'm talking about because they have kind of a unique effect to them. So let's start with those. All right, so we see here, thanks to screenshotting and frame-by-frame -frame video running, I was able to pull a couple screenshots that actually showed a couple of these Dawn armor mods. So Season of Dawn armor mods, just like the sets of currently undying that have the little Vex symbol on the armor mod slots. This is going to be a new one with a little eagle, and again, only Season of Dawn armor mods will fit in there. And this is the new thing they're trying. So as you can see here, you've got energy cost of one, so it's pretty cheap to equip. Become charged with light. This is a new mechanic that they're doing. So you have a mod that you'll equip, at least on one piece of armor. This is any of them, so you can kind of pick and choose where you want to put this thing. Become charged with the light. You'll see the green icon. The mod has actually got a green color to it. It looks just like the one that's next to the word become. It's got a sniper. It's got a linear fusion. And the little green star is open, is the best way I can describe that. So it's open. There's nothing inside. When you become charged with light, uh, the way to do that is by getting multiple rapid precision final blows with linear fusions or sniper rifles. You're going, it's not the easiest thing to do. Multiple rapid precision final blows with a linear fusion or a sniper. You're going to have to be firing your sniper pretty quick with quite a few enemies that are likely jumping around. This is not going to be the easiest thing to do. Also, you'll notice by equipping this, you lose 10 discipline. That's that's a big trade-off. You're giving up a full tier of grenade re recharge time just to be able to get charged with the light. Okay, so what does this do? Is this worth a damn? 
Honestly, we won't know until we get in there. We don't know the varieties of these that we have, but an example of when you want to consume your light looks like this. So protective light takes two while charged with light. Hence the uh, charge with light. And you can also see the icon of the mod next to it. It's now yellow. Uh, you've got a little plus around it, but you also see the little star, uh, the kind of four curved diamond shape thing. That is now full. The entire the icon is completely filled up. So you do the other thing. You get a couple, you get like three multi kill shots with a sniper rifle, and you become charged with light. All right, what am I going to do with this light? Well, you're going to have different options to pick on another armor's piece that are going to allow you to consume the light and then actually, you know, do something with it. This one, for example, you gain significant damage resistance against combatants when your shields are destroyed. Now, we all know we're pretty weak once our shield drops, because usually our shield's about two-thirds of our health. Um, so when that thing drops off, you are significantly more damage resistant. This is a way to keep you alive, actually. This effect consumes all stacks of charged light, which means if you get multi-kills a couple times, and then... Um, you actually consume this thing, that's pretty cool. This effect consumes all stacks of charged with light. The more stacks consumed, the longer the damage resistance lasts. So this one is actually cool because it's passive. So while you're charged with light, you're running through a strike, you get kills with a sniper rifle, cool, you're stacked once. You're running, you get farther in, you've got a couple more sniper rifle kills, cool, you get another stack. I don't know how far it stacks, we'll just have to see. I'm sure there's a cap to it, three or five would be my guess. And then all of a sudden you take a big shot of damage from either a big enemy like a Hydra or a Colossus stomps and smacks you in a wall. You gain significant damage resistance against combatants when your shields are destroyed. So when your shields get ripped off of you and you take enough damage, it pulls your stacks, it consumes your stacks of light, gives you that extra damage resistance, and then the more stacks you have, the longer it lasts. So in that moment where you're in peril, you are actually noticeably, hopefully, harder to kill. I don't know how much harder to kill it's going to be. I don't know what this is going to be like in PvP, because that's going to be quite interesting. Um, but this is kind of cool, because this one is passive. There was another one that's probably more active to it, uh, but this is just the general idea I wanted to show you guys, so you could see what it looks like when we're looking at charge with light versus consuming the charge. All right, so here's another example. So Empowered Finish. Become charged with light by finishing your combatant, consuming one-tenth of your super energy. So this is another dawning armor mod. If you do a finisher, it's going to charge you with light, and that is going to cost one-tenth of your super energy. But this is a dawn armor slot. You also potentially, like as we used a heavy finisher class item, you could potentially charge yourself with light, and if you want to spend the seven points on a class item, you could also potentially get the heavy finisher block and the heavy ammo block to drop. So you could potentially have both of these at the same time. It's just going to cost you... A half and then a tenth of your energy so it's going to cost you quite a bit but this is another way to charge yourself with light kind of on a little more reliable fashion if you want that one and then if we go to a, another one of these consumable ones this is going to be high energy fire now this one costs four and this is noticeably more while charged with light gain a bonus to weapon damage each defeated enemy consumes one stack of charged with light so there are ways to play this one while you are charged with light, um, gain a bonus to weapon damage. Just straight up, while you have that charge, you gain bonus damage. Now, when is the proper time you're really going to want to do this one? Well, you'd likely want to finish a low-level mob that is around a boss and turn around and dump all your damage into a boss because each defeated enemy consumes one stack. If you don't defeat any enemies besides that boss, you won't consume that stack of light. So your idea there would be to weaken other enemies, maybe finish one, get another stack. But while you're putting damage into that boss, have this charge of light and do more damage the entire time. That's a big deal. Being able to do more damage just on the drop while you are charged with light is very cool. So there are multiple ways to get charged with light and there are multiple ways to consume it. I'm sure we have not seen them all, but this is just a couple examples to get to see what I am talking about here when it comes to these new Dawn Armor mods. I think it is kind of cool. It gives a little risk versus reward. The stats that it takes is somewhat kind of risky because we saw one of them loses 10 discipline, another loses 10 strength just to have these things equipped. So you're kind of definitely picking a build a little bit more. Again, it's kind of hard to know how useful these will be, but the fact that if you are charged with light, you just do extra bonus damage. Anytime you need to kill a boss, a major, a champion, 
those are going to be really, really useful things. And especially for, I can imagine Esoteric taking this thing on a solo run, finish a basic enemy, turn around and knock out a champion just with extra damage, even easier. So there are ways that this could be very, very beneficial, but I could see bosses. Everybody go finish an enemy. Okay, everybody come back. Okay, let's knock this thing out. So, I mean, there are ways where if you guys can all stack, getting extra, extra bonus damage on you. And I don't know if this bonus damage will stack with, say, uh, Ward of Dawns, your Weapons of Light. We will have to see if it stacks. As it is based on a mod, I would have to think it would because you are giving up quite a bit to do this. But we won't know until we get there. So, that's pretty much the general idea of the mods. They showed a couple other ones, but the final thing is the artifact. So, let's take a look at the artifact and see what we can decipher from this. All right, so this is our artifact. We've got the Lantern of Osiris. Um, from what you guys can see, it looks really cool. Gold, shiny, mercury symbols are all over it. Now, they have made some changes. They did want to say that there's going to be a focus on more ranged combat. So on the top mod slot, you guys will see that we've got a zero and a barrier. And you are granting shield piercing on bo all bows, scouts, and pulse rifles. So you can equip it on all of those. We've also got scouts, pulses, and bows for unstoppable. Those will probably be the two more common ones. In the trailer for Sundial, we definitely saw uh, unstoppable Colossus, which just seems like a terrifying combination. And then we also, I think, saw... Um, no, they were barrier Colossus. I'm sorry. And then unstoppable Incendiors. So quite a bit of unstoppables and barriers are going to be likely in the Sundial. You have to have overload some way. We've got Overload Auto Rifle down here at the bottom. So, they move these to the left, still costing zero. Um, just giving you the functionality that you need on these mods. Then we get to the second column. So, they change some stuff up. Not all of it is Enhanced Reloading. We do have Enhanced Unflinching Rifle Aim. So, anything that is a rifle-class weapon will have Enhanced Unflinching Aim. So, easier to keep on target as you're trying to stay precise. It's kind of important. Uh, we've also got, of course, Enhanced Sniper Rifle Loader, Enhanced Bow Loader. And um, also, these don't seem to be named quite accurate, but we've got Enhanced Linear Fusion Targeting, which looks to be this one here. And then this one looks to potentially be um, Enhanced Reloader for rifles as well. So, rifles are going to be the big focus this time. A little bit more range to it, but Auto Rifle can kind of fall under this category. We'll have to see how these exactly pan out. Again, some of these could be placeholder icons. I could be wrong, but these are speculation. But again, enhanced reload speed, but also as we're working with precision weapons, a little more unflinching ammo or unflinching aim seems like it'll actually have some benefit to it. Third column, also pretty cheap on mods. Um, we've got Glimmer. Previously, this one was coming from just killing enemies. And this one looks to be like either breaking shields because that looks like a big cabal shield. And then it's the Glimmer icon with the Cabal Shield. So we can speculate on that one. We're not entirely sure, but I'm guessing it's something of either Breaking Shields. Uh, something like that will get you some Glimmer. So that could be pretty cool. The one below. Now, I don't know why it looks like it has the si Hive Swords crossed. Maybe this is truly a placeholder because I feel like it's got to be. The circle with the four arrows pointed out was basically a previous destination materials in the previous season. So I'm guessing this is going to be something related to destination materials. Maybe this will switch when we actually get the real version. And maybe this little swords is a placeholder. But destina destination materials seems like a thing. Up here, finishers for Glimmer. That still seems like it's pretty standard. This one I honestly don't know. This is definitely the Red Legion Cabal symbol. So maybe you've got Cabal getting you ammo because those look like bullets. But why they're in a wreath, I have no idea. On to the last two columns, obviously, where we have the most fun. Now, previously we had um, Breach Refractor. So, as you can see, it's the when you pierce a shield or, you know, finish off a barrier enemy. Instead of just getting grenade energy, it looks like we're going to get grenade and melee energy. So, these are combined, but they do cost more. They will cost five. Uh, but getting those barrier enemies broken, definitely going to be worthwhile to get some of that energy back. So, this one actually feels like it's got some good use. Um, looks like we've got overload grenades, this time just being solar. Um, disruption for the overload enemies being even more powerful for this one down here. Still looks like you've got the unstoppable melees in action. Risky, but hopefully it works. And then down here is the question mark. Now, I don't know. This thing does look like a bullet in between, but also looks like it fits right where the symbol of unstoppable would be. So maybe you've got unstoppable rifle or something like that. Not entirely sure, but that's just a guess. Um, if you can get unstoppable on rifle on all three and it costing three instead of one, you can just kind of mix up your mods, use them all the time. Just have to see how this one works. But that does look unstoppable. 
final column that we've got. Now, the one on the top corner is called Guardian Angel. It grants a chance to generate healing orbs for you on Scout Rifle, Sniper Rifle, Bow, and Linear Fusion Precision Final Blows. Now, it doesn't say for your team, but healing orbs for you in those moments. Now, they are ranged kills, most likely, so you're going to have to go get those healing orbs. We don't know how long they're going to last on the ground. But the fact that healing orbs could just be on the ground for you in those moments, if you're like, hey, I need some health, I can run over these, I got to run up to this thing. I don't know how valuable this will be. We will just have to see in action, but it is worth four, so it's not that pricey, really. So again, kind of temper how powerful this thing could be. Down here, previously we had arc battery. This looks like void battery. Almost the same thing. Not entirely sure if it's going to be different, but that is what we're looking at previously. Heavy finisher is still here for the same cost. It is still really pricey. If it costs still a half of your super, that's still expensive. I didn't use it last season. I don't know how many people did, but in theory, it's okay. But it's like, if it costs too much of your super, I'm not going to give up a super for one heavy brick. As long as they don't suck at dropping, I'm okay. Down here, this is kind of a similar look uh, because you have the swirl around it. So we don't know if it's fire. Don't know if it's going to be void. Um, but we had thunder coil previously that had kind of the arc around the, the fist. But the fist was smaller, so still don't know if melee, fire, if you're going to have instead of thunder coil, solar coil, just have to see. Final icon on the bottom is the same symbol that was there last season. So as you guys can see from the artifact, we don't have a drastic amount of changes. Uh, you still have your barrier, still have your unstoppable and overload. We're just going more range. So we've got bows, scouts, snipers, um, pulses, more ranged weapons, changing up the reload, reload you know, options that pair well with those. You've got your Cabal focused items here and your destination materials. We've got more solar focus this season, so we've got solar here. Um, but we also look like we've got Void as our other one, and Void being the only thing really sitting out here on the outside. Maybe this is a very Void focused season. It is Season of Dawn, so Ward of Dawn kind of seems to be fitting between Solar with Mercury and Dawn with um, Saint-14. That seems to be our pairing. So that is basically all I've got from the stream yesterday. Uh, there was some gameplay, and I know this is kind of a long breakdown, but this is everything that we've got so far from the season. This week at Bungie will be out tonight. Uh, I work this evening, so I will try and do a video tomorrow morning um, so you guys can actually see what comes from the TWAB. And then the podcast will be tomorrow night. As I said, it will be 6 p.m. Eastern Time, twitch.tv slash Ibantis. Myself, Lord Cognito, um, for always the last word, and then we've got our guest, Teddy, in here. He's got like 112,000 Grimoire score. The guy has spent more time in this game than probably both of us. So he's got a breadth of knowledge on this game and we definitely want to tap into his mind and see what he thinks about the changes coming up for the season. So thank you guys for tuning in. Again, I know this is a long one, but going through everything that I can at least speculate and see on, hopefully to give you guys a full idea of as what is coming. Let me know your thoughts of what we've seen so far. We don't have the full picture. Again, remember this is a $10 season pass. Think about the season of Undying, what we got. And without Shadow Keep, it, you know, it's still its own season. So this is a separate season. We're already probably getting more than we've got with Season of Undying. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, drop a like below, leave a comment. Come join the podcast tomorrow live on Twitch. And then all you guys, you can find me on Twitter and right here on the on YouTube. If you haven't subbed to the channel, hit the sub button, hit the alert bell. New videos will be coming. Season of Dawn will have plenty of content to cover. So thank you all for the support. Have a great one. And I will see you all very, very soon.